Animals have a field day in New Jersey. Kisses pay off a $5,000 debt. A song was written about a chance remark. Can you imagine that? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is Lindsay McCary back again with another assorted collection of odd facts and news items with which to amuse and entertain you for a while. Until my cohorts and I return in just a minute and a half, we hope you'll wait, won't you? You've all heard the old song about the animal fair. It seems that all the birds and the beasts were there. Well, in the first part of the month of August, 1926, the state of New Jersey had an animal fair all its own. It was on August 5th that the phone rang in police headquarters in Middleton, New Jersey. Police, Death Sergeant speaking. This is Oliver W. Holton, owner of the Twin Brook Zoo. Yeah. And look, there's a leopard loose from my zoo. Huh? A leopard? Yes, it's vicious. Escaped from a crate. You better warn everybody to look out for it because it's dangerous. Shoot to kill if you can't capture it. I'll offer a hundred dollars reward, dead or alive. Yes, sir. Higgins, Mallory, Cassidy. Yes, sir. There's a leopard loose someplace. We got to get it. But Saturday, August seventh rolled around, and the spotted killer was still on the loose, roaming the Red Bank countryside. The reward went up to five hundred dollars, and rifles were loaned by the National Guard to nearly a hundred men. The hunt was on. But meanwhile, still in New Jersey, on August 9th, in Pompton Lake. Say, ain't that a dog howling? Yep. Been hearing it for quite a spell now. Wonder what's the matter with it. Let's take a look outside, Joe. Sounds like it's pretty close. Okay. Say, there it is. That collie right over there. Hey, get away from there. Shut up. Uh, he ain't gonna get. He's staying right there. Well, I'll... Say, look. Running a little piece, then stop still. He wants us to follow him. Yep. Come on, let's get Sam and Cole. That dog might have found the leopard that's running loose. Come on, we'd better get a couple of guns just in case. A half a dozen citizens followed the frantic dog, following him to a mud hole where they stopped. You see anything, Joe? Uh, nope, no anything, Ed. Well, that dog sees something. I... Hey, hey, look, Ed. Look in the center of the mud hole. A cow. Oh, yeah. Stuck in the mud with only her head to show us. Now, come on, get the others. We'll get her out of there. Poor critter. All right, come on, boys. Let's yeah. get out of there. Anxious to help, the collie jumped into the mud hole and promptly got stuck, right in the way of the cow's rescuers. First the dog had to be pulled out, and then the cow. Can you imagine that? But that isn't all about New Jersey's Animal Fair of August 1926. It was on August 11th that Leon Shoulder of Elizabeth, New Jersey, was taking his pet chimpanzee for a walk when... Now, now, take it easy. Take it easy. You'll... Hey! Hey! Oh, my gosh, he slipped out of the lease. Hey, somebody catch that chimp. Somebody catch him. Get after him down there. Get after him. Spurred on by yells and commotion, the chimp raced down the streets through alleys. Every once in a while, he eased the strain on his feet by swinging through trees and dropping to earth in front of frightened citizens. He bit three of his pursuers, and then... Gosh, I'm, I'm glad you got here, boys. I think I've got that chimpanzee cornered in the cellar at 309 Center Street. Just give me a hand and we'll have him in no time. We'll take care of him, mister. Better let the police handle this. This is no job for you. What do you mean? It ain't a job for me. Say, I guess you don't know. I'm the dog catcher around here. <laughs> the two officers and Mr. Howe cornered the wandering chimpanzee in a cellar 
where Mr. Hawk tossed a dog-catching net over the slippering simian, and the chase was over. One more chapter has been written in the August 1926 saga of the New Jersey galloping animals. But one more was to follow. In Orange, a little dog decided to chase a cat, but uh, forgot that the cat was smaller and a bit more agile. The cat slithered between 209 and 211 Main Street. The dog followed it, only to find that the space between the two buildings, although ample for Kitty, was just a little too small for himself, and he was soon held fast. A few moments later, the phone rang in an Orange police station. Yeah, Orange police station. Hey, there's a dog stuck between two buildings, 209 and 211 Main Street. You better get him out. Okay, I'll send somebody. Tooley, there. Grath, yeah. you two are the skinniest cops around here. Go down to 209 Main Street and get a dog out that's stuck between two... The two officers went, but the dog was stuck fast. The officers made funny little noises like a cat, tossed ropes and did everything to get the dog out, but it was useless. The fire department was called and the ladder lowered between the two buildings. The dog refused to climb the ladder, but was eventually rescued by slipping a hooked pole under his collar. And that about ends New Jersey's animal fair. In the seven days between August 5th and 12th, New Jersey had a loping leopard, a quagmired cow, an over-enthusiastic collie, a chasing chimpanzee, and a wedged-in dog. Can you imagine that? Well, here's an odd way to clear up a debt. From a newspaper of December 1, 1909, comes a story about the Temple of Emmanuel in Chicago, Illinois. It seems that a debt of $5,000 had accrued. After a conference, it was decided to hold, of all things, a kissing bee. Can you imagine that? More than a score of girls, each of them a pretty miss, volunteered their services. Said their leader, The girls will line up in a corner of a hall, which will be known as Smackville. Kisses will be 50 cents each, and no one man will be allowed more than a dollar's worth from one girl. If the men want to kiss more than that, they will have to take their money's worth by kissing all the girls. <laughs> of course, the various kinds of kisses came up for discussion. Some girls said the kiss should be limited to a platonic peck upon the cheek, but said one practical miss. Nonsense. What man will pay 50 cents to kiss a girl on the cheek? We won't do any business at all. And so it was agreed to take a chance with the more amorous of the kiss purchasers who might try to get more than 50 cents worth of osculation by prolonging the kiss. Said the spokeswoman of the girls. This won't be any love affair. This is purely a business proposition to lift the debt on the temple. I'm sure we can charge 50 cents per kiss because it's worth every bit of it. I've always hated mustaches, but I'll take a chance on them for the good of the temple. No girl will be allowed to sell more than 400 kisses. We salute the genius of the person who thought up the plan of selling kisses at 50 cents each to liquidate a debt of $5,000. For the musical portion of this Can You Imagine That, we're going to present another of those interesting song stories. That is, we're going to tell you how a certain song was written. The title of our lesson today is I Wonder Who's Kissing Her Now. This famous old song was written, as you probably know, by Frank R. Adams and Will M. Huff. But how? Well, it seems that Mr. Adams and Mr. Huff were collaborating on a new musical show, The Prince of Tonight. During this collaboration, Adams gave a party at his summer home in White Lake, Michigan. Among the friends he invited were two young ladies who were known to be chums. Came the night of the party and... Uh... <laughs> Well, 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 I, I was just beginning to give up hope. I thought you weren't coming. Oh, no, Mr. Adams. I wouldn't miss your party for the world. Good girl. Good. Oh, you know Mr. Huff, of course. How do you do? How do you do? I'd begin to give up hope, too. But now we can have a real party with such a charming guest. <laughs> your compliments sound a great deal like lyrics for a song, Mr. Huff. <laughs> He's got you there, Will. Oh, uh, where's your friend? I thought she was coming with you. Oh, uh, she, uh, she had a previous engagement. She asked me to thank you and excuse her. Well, that's too bad. Well, come along and I'll introduce you to some of the people you haven't met. Coming, Will? Yes, I think I will. And incidentally, I'm going to put in my bed for the first dance. Well, it may be that the young girl wasn't having a very good time. We don't know. At any rate, we find her later out on the veranda in the moonlight with the wind singing a romantic song through the trees. Perhaps she thought of her absent friend who had a date. Maybe with a handsome lad down from Yale in a bulldog shoes, peg-top trousers, and a calabash pipe. While she was on the veranda... Adams and Huff were standing nearby talking. Well, Will, we've got to get out the lyrics for that one song. I've been writing lyrics in my sleep. I can't seem to get a good theme, a good start. Oh, never mind. We've been stuck before, but we've come out of it all right. Say, Frank, our young lady seems to be a bit lonely without her friend. <laughs> or maybe we're just a little too old for her, Will. <laughs> uh, let's go over and cheer her up. All right. Ah, here, here. Oh. <laughs> what kind of business is this? Pretty girl like you standing out here alone. I'll fix that up during the next dance. Oh, thank you. You seem to be down in thought. Oh, uh, yes, I guess I was dreaming a little. Maybe it's absurd, but I was thinking about my chum. I guess I'm different than she is. But everywhere she goes, she, she seems to have such a good time. So many gentlemen friends. While I... 
Well, I guess I was just meant to be a, a wallflower. I wonder... I wonder who's kissing her now. Oh, oh now, isn't that silly of me? Excuse me, please. I'll be back in a moment. Yes, certainly. Frank, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard it, Will. I wonder who's kissing her now. I think that's it, Frank. I think that's it. I wonder who's kissing her now. I wonder who's looking into her eyes, breathing sighs. Telling lies. That's it. That's it! I wonder who's kissing her now. Just a chance remark, but it was enough to start Adams and Huff on the lyrics to a song that was destined to sweep the country. Oddly enough, when the song was put in the show, The Prince of Tonight, the management and the principals concentrated on other songs which they thought would get the most applause from the audience and almost ignored I Wonder Who's Kissing Her Now. Can you imagine that? I wonder who's kissing her now I wonder who's teaching her how Wonder who's looking into her eyes, breathing sighs, telling lies. I wonder who's buying the wine for lips that I used to call mine. I wonder if she ever tells him of me. I wonder. Who's kissing her now? I wonder who's buying the wine lips that I used to call mine. I wonder if she ever tells him of me. I wonder who's kissing her now. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the song that made a nation hum and was built around the chance remark of a young lady who envied her chum. Can you imagine that? Well, now, before I turn you over to your own station announcer, I'd like to say this is Lindsay McCary bidding you goodbye now.